All right, guys, so this video is gonna be a breakdown of a few atomic structure questions, all right? This is for the AQA, A-level chem specification, a mixture of questions. You've got some theory, some calculations. I'm gonna show you my thought process and how I break these down in the exam, all right? Atomic structure is one of the high yield topics for AQA, so I'd be trying to get full marks where possible in all of these questions, all right? So, get out your notebooks, get out a piece of paper, a calculator, and try and solve these questions yourself. If you're confused, no worries, let's explain what's going on here, okay? So let's start off with question 1.1. Describe the process by which ions are accelerated, detected, and their abundance measured in a time of flight mass spectrometer, okay? So I'm going to explain the theory a little bit, and then I'll write out my response, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this periodic table over because we don't need this for now and explain sort of what happens, okay? So acceleration is stage one that we're gonna be looking at for the purposes of this question. But before this stage, we have another one, and that stage is ionization, okay? Two types of ionization. Can you remember what they are? We have electrospray, electrospray ionization, and electron impact. Okay, I know this is asking for acceleration, but this is important because the ionization determines the ability for the acceleration to occur, okay? So we have electrospray electron impact ionization. In both of these cases, a positive ion is formed, okay? For electrospray, let's say our ion or isotope is the symbol X, okay? We're gonna have X H plus because the way that it gets ionized is it, it's dissolved in a solvent and it bonds with a H plus. Okay, and that is our positive ion for electrospray. Electron impact, we don't have a proton involved. We just remove one of the outer shell electrons and we're left with a positively charged one plus X, whatever this X molecule is, or ion, isotope, or well, it's always an ion, but it, whatever it is, okay, X plus, okay. So what do we have in both these cases? We have a positively charged ion, okay. So let's say we have our flight tube in our time of flight mass spec, okay? We have the ionization occurring here, and over here, we have a plate, okay? We have a plate, and we have a detector at the end. Detector and plate, okay? This plate right here is negative, negatively charged plate. So what happens? We get ionization occurring over here, right, which creates a bunch of positively charged ions, okay? Negatives attract, okay? Sorry, oppositely charged attracts, right? So all these positive ions are gonna be attracted towards this negatively charged plate, okay? So the stage of acceleration is, the terminology here is really important. You say they are accelerated by an electric field. This is an electric field, okay? The difference in charge. Okay, so that will be my first point, is um, positively charged ions are accelerated by an electric field. Okay, that would be my key word right here, electric field, okay? Don't say magnetic, it's not magnetic, okay? That would lose you the mark. Commonly done, guys. In, ex in examiner's reports, magnetic field is a common response that's incorrect, all right? Now, what's happened is we can ignore the acceleration stage. We've talked about that now. Next up is the detection stage, okay? They are detected. How are they detected? Okay, so we have this negatively charged plate right here, and there's another negatively charged plate at the end right here. This is a second one, okay? So the ions flow past through here, and hit this detector, okay? Now, at this detector, because it's negatively charged, the negative charge has an abundance of what? It has an abundance of electrons, okay? So if we have X plus, which is our ion, whatever the molecule is, it hits this detector plate, right? And what happens is it gains an electron onto itself, okay? It's reduced. The ion is reduced back to X, okay? Now, this electron transferring from the negatively charged detection plate to the ion is a flow of electrons. Flow of electrons. Try and remember this. Flow of electrons equals current. 
Okay, so a current is produced when the ion hits the detector. All right. Now, that would be our second point. Okay. Electrons are transferred. From the negatively charged detector, or you could just put detector. I'll put negatively charged plate in brackets to positively charged ions. And what does this do? It generates a current, okay? And generates a current. Okay, boom. So let's tick these off. We've done acceleration, we've done detection. How is their abundance measured? Okay. All you have to remember here is that abundance is determined by the amount of current that flows. In other words, the abundance of isotope. Okay, remember these are ions, but it's actually looking at the different isotopes that are in the mass spec, right? Is proportional to the current generated. Let's rewrite that. That did not look like generated. Generated, okay. So the more current that's generated, the more abundant that isotope is, okay. And there's other ways you can word this, but this is sort of how I'm explaining it to you in real time, and then sort of my brain outputting a response to this question, okay. So many various keywords that you have to remember, but you can write it in a few different ways, okay. Just remember, positively charged ions are accelerated by this, an electric field. Electrons are transferred from the detector to the ions, generates a current, and the current is proportional to the abundance of the isotope. Okay? If you remember those keywords, you should be good to go. If you remember the theory, that's just a bonus. Okay? But that would be my three marks done. Let's tick that off. Okay? Next up, we've got a little bit of calculations, and then we're going to be dealing with a TOF mass spec kinetic energy calculation. Okay? Let's look at this. Calculate the mass in kilograms of a single 103 RH plus ion. We have to use Avogadro's constant. Mm, okay, so what do we have here? Normally in these amount of substance, atomic structure, acids and bases questions, I say one thing. I say start with the moles, okay? We can't do that in this situation because we don't know what the moles are, okay? But we can use our knowledge of Avogadro's constant and our periodic table to work out what the mass is, okay? Now, let's draw this out. So, we're going to be having our relative atomic mass, our AR, okay? Now, in this, we can see that the mass number of this isotope, or this ion, I should say, is 103. Okay, let's go over to our periodic table to find 103, okay? So rhodium is 102.9. For the purposes of this question, the isotope is 103. What you can do here is you can assume that for this ion, because its mass number is 103, okay, we can assume that its AR is just 103, okay? Grams per mole, okay? Grams per mole. That is the units of AR and the units of MR. Okay, I'm going to sort of teach you something here where you can use units to solve stuff, all right? Now, what we can do is we can look at this Avogadro's constant, right? And we can see what the units are. We can see that the units are per mole. 6.022 times 10 to the 23 per mole, okay? Now, how are we going to get this to be a mass unit? The unit right here is currently grams per amount of something, okay, grams per mole. We want to get it down to just a mass unit which in this instance would be grams. So we have to get rid of this per mole, okay? What we can do here is if we create an equation here, AR equals this divided by Avogadro's constant, okay, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 per mole, okay? Top and the bottom of the fraction, whatever is the same for the units will cancel. So we've got the per mole on the top, per mole on the bottom, that cancels, and we're left with just the mass unit on the numerator, okay? And that is gonna give us a mass. So if we put that in our calculator, we can work out what this is in grams, okay? So 103 divided by 6.022 times 10, so it's 23, and that gives us 
0, 0.0395 times 10 to the minus 22. Okay, this is in grams. All right, the question has not asked us the mass in grams, it's asked us the mass in kilograms. Okay, grams is the standard unit for A-level chemistry. The reason they've asked us in kilograms is because the unit of time of flight mass spec for this guy right here in the K equals half mv squared equation is kilograms. Really important that you remember that, okay? That's the only reason that they've asked, asked us to convert it into kilograms, all right? If this was just calculate the mass of a single blah, 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 you would have to then convert it here, and this would probably be a three mark question. Okay, but they're stealing some marks from us here by making this one mark and this two marks. All right. How do you go from grams to kilograms? Okay. We're going from a smaller unit, a gram, to a bigger unit, a kilogram. So you have to divide by a thousand. Okay. In other words, times 10 to the minus three. These are the same thing. Use whichever you're more comfortable with. Okay. I like to use times 10 to the minus three in situations like this, or actually in every situation, but in situations like this, it's very handy because it saves me a little bit of time where I don't have to use my calculator. Uh, because all I have to do is minus this three from this indice right here, okay? So it would give you an answer of to the minus 25. So that's what I'm gonna put as my answer here. 1.710395 times 10 to the minus 25 kilograms, okay? Would that be my final answer? Okay, you have to really pay attention to, to accuracy of the variables given to you in the question. Now we can see here, all we've been given, right, is the Avogadro's constant, which is four sig figs, okay? However, we have used this right here, 103. We have used the 103, which is three sig figs, and we've assumed that that's the same thing as the MR, or the AR, sorry, okay? By the way, this was AR, this should have been mass, but I was saying what the AR was, all right? So our final answer is going to be 1.71 times 10 to the minus 25 kilograms. Okay, that would be our final answer. Really pay attention to the different variables given to you in the question, all the different data points and how you use them, because although this is four, we also use this one. All right. So that is an easy one marker, a bit savage of AQA to only give you one mark. That should be two marks in my opinion, but there we go. Right, let's go on to 1.3. TOF mass spec, the kinetic energy of this ion right here was 1.284 times 10 to the minus 13. Calculate the velocity of the ion, okay? So this is a really, really easy kinetic energy calculation question. It's only two marks. Normally these sort of questions would be going for four or five marks, okay? And it's because you need to use the second equation, velocity equals distance over time, and input that into this expression and solve in a more complicated way. But for this, all we have to do is because we're looking for the velocity, we just have to make velocity the subject of this equation. And it's very easy, okay? As long as you get good at rearranging, you're gonna be all good. So if we have Ke equals half mv squared, I'll do this step by step for you guys that aren't so great at rearranging. We're gonna times both sides by two to get rid of this half, okay? So what that is gonna transform into is two Ke equals mv squared, okay? Now we need to get rid of the m from both sides. So I'm gonna divide it from this side to get rid of it. I'm gonna put it on this side. Okay, let's actually rub it out. Now, I have a v squared here, but I want a v. So all I have to do is square root both sides like this, okay? So I square rooted this side, square rooted this side, I can get rid of the squared, okay? And that would be my simple expression for what velocity is, okay? So all you have to do now is input what our values are. So two lots of whatever our kinetic energy was, 1.284 times 10 to the minus 13 joules divided by, what do we have here, mass, okay? We just calculated what the mass is in kilograms, 1.71 times 10 to the minus 25, all right? Now you do not need to convert it back into grams. Remember I said the unique case of time of flight mass spec calculations regarding kinetic energy is the standard unit here is kilograms. Really do your best to remember that, okay? And also remember the square root, okay? So we're gonna have square root, fraction two, bracket it up, 1.284 times 10 to the minus 13. Bracket it up again, divided by 1.71 times 10 to the minus 25. 
All right. It gives us a big ass number here because it's a super fast ion. Let's write this out. Equals one. Was it one million two hundred twenty-five thousand four hundred and sixty point eight eight seven meters per second? Now we don't want to be matching this. Uh, this is four sig figs. But remember, we worked out the mass previously in this question and the lowest data um, significant figures we used was three. So I'm going to match that again. So because we've got such a big number here and we want it to be three sig figs, we're going to make it into standard form. OK, let's just convert it to standard form. So it's going to be 1.23 because we're going to round this times 10 to the six meters per second. OK, that's because it's a million. Just remember times 10 to the six and you're all good to go. All right, and that is our final answer right there. Two marks, not too bad.